San Francisco looking at banning toys at fast food restaurants. Oh, shut up, you busybody, <laughs> nanny state communists! This is if the food has too much fat, sugar, or salt in it. Now, earlier this, this year... Is, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And I've meh, heard a lot of meh, stupid things. Tell me how to live. Tell me what I can and can't do. Bah, lead me. Feed me. Bah. Earlier this year, Santa Clara County became the first local government in the nation to make such a move. Chronicle reports, though, that applies only to the unincorporated areas in the county, and the San Francisco ban could have much more of an impact. Now, they're not only looking at the uh, salt and the fat and the sugar, but you can only offer toys with a meal that provides a healthy portion of fruit and vegetables as well. So you need to offer asparagus sticks with a cheap, crappy little plastic Uh. toy. (laughs) The government is going to tell you what you can sell, what you can buy, what you can eat. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that at all. Whether or not a company can uh, put a toy in with their food. Right. I wonder the what... government's going to tell you whether that's okay. You actually think that's all right, to have the government step in on the whole whether a company ought to give away a toy for free thing. Wow. I wonder how hard the movie studio is going to fight back on this thing. Oh, that's right. There's an angle uh, of it I haven't yeah. even thought Wait about. Wait a minute. I'm thinking There's about how it's there. destroying the nation, but uh, the, the Toy Story people are not going to be very happy with it either. Well, maybe strange bedfellows, but let's jump in. All right, here's the here's the ugly truth about nanny laws. We're going to run late. You want to run late or do it next? I think next probably makes sense. A really great, the well-crafted tease. Well, yeah. Uh, whoa. Right give now? Little, give you a little time to think. Much more than merely annoying, nanny laws have a dark, dark side. People already know that who listen to the show. Why do those who would... Are you aiming this tease at people who don't listen to the show? (laughs) Well, no, no, you idiot. I'm trying to come up with a tease that pleases those who listen to the show and doesn't just merely state something they already know. All right, wait. No, nothing's coming. I think I'm turning Japanese. You got to get two beers and jump. Those who would shackle us with nanny laws aren't merely do-gooding busybodies. It's something much, much worse. Okay, that's interesting. It took me a while, but... That's interesting. I'm going to stay tuned. You are listening to the Armstrong and Getty Show. And watching on the Bay Area's TV 50. So when your boss is riding your ass, you got to get two beers and jump. When your truck ain't got no gas, you gotta get two beers and jump. You gotta get two beers and jump. You gotta get two beers and jump. From the text line, when you get stung on the nose by a wasp, you gotta get two beers and jump. That's true enough. Welcome to the Armstrong and Getty Show. Also, somebody used the term Jesus cleats when referring to flip flops. Which I hadn't heard. Oh, I hadn't heard that term. <laughs> Well, I've never heard that term. Also from the text line, saw some toe antlers in line at the Target yesterday. (laughs) Toe antlers? Oh, God. I know, that's the other aspect of it. Clip your toenails maybe once a year. Some of you people who wear flip-flops. Gnarly. Mm. Jeez, it is gnarly. All right. I don't know what it is that just deflates me and sickens me. Jimmy Fallon was right. When you see people with disgusting feet and flip flops, you, you got to get two <laughs> beers and jump. Boy, that thing is stuck in my head probably for life now. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. So we got this email from Kobe from Brentwood, who, by the way, I appreciate very much signs off. Jai Ho. <laughs> oh, those were the days. Um, and it's about the nanny laws and the nanny state. And I was trying to figure out how to present this to ye. I was going to not say where this little screed came from um, because it's from uh, one of Ayn Rand's books, which are so loaded with baggage among the intelligentsia. Uh, they're so readily scoffed at for a couple of reasons, some of them good. Uh, they're just they're they're ponderous leaden novels. They're not novels at all, really. They're political screeds masquerading as novels. And I so, read about half of Atlas Shrugged one time, and uh, I just couldn't go any further. I thought The Fountainhead was great. I like that. I read I've the whole thing. Not but, read that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, it's more a story. Uh, Atlas Shrugged is the one in particular that's uh, it's hundreds and hundreds of pages of of. Oh, it's like a thousand pages long. It's an insanely long book. Right, and it, it it's a lot longer than it needs to be, but. Uh, lefties just loathe her and her ideas. But listen to this. Ask me if you think this is loathable or 
unbelievably foresightful, foresighted, foresighty, uh, back when she wrote it, which was what, the 30s? I actually don't know that. Yeah. Um, I would guess you're right. Dr. Ferris is speaking here. He is one of the leaders of the uh, society she's, uh, her character find it's, finds himself in. Do you really think we want these laws observed, Dr. Ferris asked? We want them to be broken. You'd better get it straight that it's not a bunch of Boy Scouts you're up against. We're after power and we mean it. There's no way to rule innocent men. The only power government has is the power to crack down on criminals. Well, when there aren't enough criminals, one makes them. One declares so many things to be a crime that it becomes impossible for men to live without breaking laws. Who wants a nation of law-abiding citizens? What's there in that for anyone? But just pass the kind of laws that can be neither observed nor enforced or objectively interpreted, and you create a nation of lawbreakers, and then you cash in on the guilt. Hmm. That is a fascinating thought. So not only do you have the impulses of the do-gooders who just, and we all know them, are so... God awful self self righteous. They can't restrain themselves from telling you how you ought to live, you know, uh, what pet you ought to have or not have, how you need to raise your kid, what well, you, you need to wear, what you need to eat. There are plenty of people like that, but you don't have to be like that to be in favor of Nanny Laws. Because a, right. a lot of the people mm-hmm. who wanted hands free cell phone laws came by it for good reason. They just didn't know that the research shows it doesn't do anything. Well, right. Then, then you've got your. Your utopians. Um, if you have enough laws, everything will be fine? Well, well, yeah, exactly. They're trying to... <sighs> Human freedom has disappointed them. The way things are has really disappointed them. So they're trying to legislate the world as they think it ought to be uh, and are willing to sacrifice whatever amount of freedom is necessary to get to their vision of a gr- perfect society. What I what, what I hate the most is what the, the g- groups of people who want to pass laws for other people. Oh yeah, for their safety, and it doesn't even have any effect on you. Like motorcycle helmets, you're so concerned about that guy on a motorcycle, you need to pass a law, even though it has nothing to do with you. Or the great, uh, or the other great, people's kids, or the great uh, discussion-ending argument that, well, we're all going to pay for it when you screw up. So I do have a right to tell you what to do. Well, my friends, the problem is with the premise. That's the problem with socialism, is you completely lose the ability to say, no, this is my life, this is my choice, I choose freedom. You can't choose that anymore if everybody is paying for you. And that's the great insidious uh, you know, problem with socialism. I don't so, understand then- that. I have no inclination toward that myself at all. If you do dangerous things for you and your life and your kids or family or whatever, I, you know, that's your deal. Right. I just, I'm not, I'm going to take care of my own. Right. You know, there's a guy, where was this? Was it Russia? A guy died in a, quote, sauna contest. <laughs> yeah. Who knew? And somebody passed the law. Got, well, in the United States, you'd pass a law. They got a sauna contest. This guy was in a 230 degree sauna for like six minutes and he died. Oh, what a terrible way to go. God, I'm getting lightheaded talking about it. Of course he freaking died. And of course, the immediate, uh, it's unbelievable that this sort of thing is prevented. My reaction, my honest to God reaction was who'd get in a freaking sauna contest? What a lunatic. Of course he died. And that's fine. That was his choice. He was really good at withstanding heat, wanting to get into a contest. Is he stupid? Has Darwin done his work? Yes, to both. Scott was telling us a story yesterday about somebody who let their kid climb on a rock wall that wasn't designed for little kids or something. kid fell off and broke something. So now they're suing because there weren't enough signs up, which, of course, would make you uh, believe that you need to have a sign on every tree in America, which would be an awful lot of signs saying, do not climb this tree. If you fall off, you could hurt yourself. Yeah. You want that kind of a world? I don't think people do. You know, we were talking earlier how by two to one, according to Gallup and Pew, Americans say, I want a smaller government with fewer services. Two to one. It's a monstrous majority. But everything's careening in the other direction. Well, the nanny law thing, I believe, is absolutely the same thing. Sure. Absolutely. I I guarantee you. The vast majority of people don't want more of that. But somehow our court system is driving that, I guess. Juries. I don't know what's driving it. What is driving eliminating the diving board from your uh, local swimming pool? I don't know. Liability. Well, I know, but how? What? What's behind that? Juries, what, what, what allowed lawyers. that to happen? What? What happened? 
Well, I think it all goes back to the great, uh, broad, murky, cloudy uh, end of self-reliance. We're all, we expect someone to take care of it, to right any wrong, to pay anytime something unfortunate happens. We want the government to take care of us. And when you, when you adopt that attitude, you give away, like I said before, you give away the right to say, no, no, not for me. Listen, not only am I going to have a diving board, I'm going to have one of those uh, five meter ones. You don't get that anymore. You gave that away. I wonder if it's got to do with life expectancy. When we started living longer, oh. we kind of have in our mind that we're more or less going to live forever. And so we work so hard to eliminate any possibility of things going wrong. You know, thank you for reminding me. I was going to say that's one of the other nanny law groups is these people who can't come to grips with their own mortality. And so they're trying to somehow provide immortality. It's crazy. You're right. I tell you what, when the average life expectancy was 42, and somebody was jumping off a diving board, careful, you could get hurt. Doesn't matter. You'd be dead in a year anyway. <laughs> That's part of it. I think you've nailed it. <laughs>